Hello everyone, welcome to APUSH Simplified. It has been a little while since I've done an essential primary source for APUSH, which are my favorite topics to research and make videos for. Today we have the famous and very influential essays during the Revolutionary Period, Letters from a Pennsylvania Farmer, written under a pseudonym by John Dickinson. Before getting into the details, let's start out with the historical context. Before the French and Indian War, the American colonies had experienced a great deal of economy under what is called salutary neglect. However, after the war came to an end, the British government became much more hands-on with the colonies, imposing new restrictions on movement, like the Proclamation Act of 1763, and taxes to raise revenue, like the Stamp Act of 1765, which came under protest from both American colonists and British merchants. It was swept away by the British Parliament. However, they did pass the Declaratory Act, saying it had the power and authority to tax the colonists, which a year later, the Parliament started passing the Townshend Acts, which put taxes on various imports to the colonies, usually involved items that were manufactured in England or elsewhere in the empire outside of North America. So colonists that wanted or needed those goods like tea and paper were going to have to pay a tax for them. Here steps in our wealthy and well-connected Pennsylvania lawyer, John Dickinson, who under the pseudonym Farmer, writes a series of essays discussing Britain's constitutional authority or lack of to tax the colonies. With the help of other colonial elites, his letters and essays are printed widely across the colonies, and even back in London with the support of Ben Franklin. Okay, now on to some key points. Dickinson writes extensively about British authority to regulate colonial trade. However, he draws a line at raising revenue for the British government from the colonies. He will say it is okay if the colonies agree to taxes and the tax revenue is used within the colonies. Dickinson equates the new Townshend duties with the failed Stamp Act and says that both internal taxes within the colonies and external import-export for the purpose of revenue for the British government are unconstitutional. He also discusses how Great Britain has prohibited manufacturing in the colonies, but now the colonies have to pay taxes on imported manufactured goods. He will allude that this situation is akin to slavery, which of course is an exaggeration. An important note is Dickinson does not advocate for revolution. At this point in time, that is a very radical and fringe idea, only held by a small minority of American colonists. Instead, Dickinson looks to work within the British constitutional system for change. So who would agree and disagree with Dickinson's letters in the late 1760s? Most American colonists who are impacted by the Townshend Acts would agree with Dickinson, both on his main points, merits, and his mild tone as a moderate approach protest. Some of the small but growing radical colonists advocating for revolution, like Sam Adams and the Sons of Liberty, might want a harsher tone with the British. Those that would disagree would be the British Parliament and Crown, who feel it is well within their authority to impose taxes on the colonies. Now, let's briefly turn to Dickinson's intentions. Foremost, he is intending to raise awareness, questions, and a persuasive argument about the legality, or lack of, taxes laid upon the colonies by Parliament. He has the point of view of a colonial lawyer and member of the colonial elite. His essays receive such a wide audience because of Dickinson's connections to other colonial elites from Georgia to New Hampshire. He had been a part of the Stamp Act Congress and he befriended many influential colonial leaders like Henry Lee of Virginia. Lastly, let's take a brief look at the legacy of the letters from a Pennsylvania farmer. Dickinson's arguments became the basis for opposition to the Townshend Acts, which would come to a breaking point that led to the Boston Massacre in 1770. His arguments also influenced Thomas Paine's excellent 1776 work, Common Sense. An enduring legacy throughout the revolutionary period was the ideal of the American farmer, which became a symbol of moral virtue. All right, that does it for John Dickinson's Letters from a Pennsylvania Farmer. Subscribe to the channel for more breakdowns of key primary sources and simplified explanations of the most important aspects of U.S. history. 